Strength and hypertrophy are two fundamental goals in resistance training. Strength refers to the ability to exert maximal force, essentially how much weight you can lift for low reps or a single effort. Hypertrophy refers to increasing muscle size, the growth of muscle fibers leading to larger muscles. While these two qualities are related, they arise from different physiological adaptations and require nuanced differences in training approach. In this video, we break down the science behind strength versus hypertrophy. We'll explain how your body develops strength versus muscle mass, the optimal training strategies for each, and how you can apply these principles based on your specific goals. The focus is on evidence-based, no-nonsense physiology, what actually happens in your muscles and nervous system when you train for strength versus size. Training for strength is primarily about enhancing your neuromuscular system's ability to produce force. Early strength gains are driven largely by neural adaptations, not muscle size increases. When you first start lifting heavy, your nervous system rapidly learns to recruit more motor units, the motor neurons and muscle fibers they activate, and to fire them more synchronously and frequently. This improved neural drive means you can lift significantly more weight within just weeks of training, even if your muscles haven't gotten much bigger yet. A dramatic example of neural adaptation is the cross-education effect. If you only train your right arm, your left arm, which did nothing, will still gain some strength, even though it won't grow. That's because your brain becomes better at activating muscles in general. Strength increases carry over neurally whereas muscle hypertrophy remains specific to the trained limb. In addition to recruiting more fibers, strength training improves intermuscular coordination, how different muscles work together to perform a lift, and increases tendon stiffness and joint stability. All of these neural and structural changes let you handle heavier loads. Over time, muscle hypertrophy will contribute to strength as well. A bigger muscle has a greater cross-sectional area to generate force, but maximal strength at any given moment is unlocked by training your nervous system to efficiently use the muscle you have. In practice, this means lifting heavy weights with low repetitions, honing your technique, and allowing full recovery so your nervous system can perform optimally each set. Hypertrophy training is centered on stimulating muscle fiber growth. Muscles grow when they undergo sufficient stress to trigger an anabolic building response. The key driver for muscle hypertrophy is mechanical tension, the strain on muscle fibers when lifting or resisting a load. High tension, especially on the fibers recruited in the last challenging reps of a set, signals the muscle cells to ramp up protein synthesis and rebuild bigger and stronger. Research shows that mechanical stress alone can initiate the molecular signaling for muscle growth. In practical terms, this means you need to challenge the muscle with enough weight and effort to fatigue its fibers. Along with tension, metabolic stress, the burn and pump you feel from metabolites like lactate building up, also contributes to hypertrophy by amplifying hormonal responses, cell swelling, and growth factor activity. Muscle damage, the micro tearing of fibers that occurs with hard training, is another factor often mentioned. It may play a role in remodeling and growth, but it's considered a secondary outcome of the tension and stress from training. The bottom line is that hypertrophy is a direct structural adaptation. Your muscle fibers increase in cross-sectional area by adding more contractile proteins and fluid volume. Achieving this requires enough training volume and intensity to thoroughly fatigue the muscle. An important concept here is effective reps. The last few reps of a hard set, the ones where your muscles are nearing failure, are the most stimulating for growth because they recruit the largest high threshold motor units and put maximal tension on the fibers. Hypertrophy oriented training is designed to maximize these effective reps whether by using moderate loads that allow eight to 12 reps or even lighter weights taken close to failure. The goal is to induce a strong growth stimulus via mechanical tension and metabolic stress, causing your body to adapt by making the muscles bigger. Because strength and hypertrophy have different immediate triggers, the optimal training variables differ between the two goals.
Intensity, load, and repetitions. Strength training typically involves very heavy weights for low reps. A classic guideline is to use 85 to 100% of your one RM, one rep max, for about one to five reps per set when training for maximal strength. Hypertrophy training usually uses moderately heavy weight, around 75 to 85% of one RM, for roughly six to 12 reps per set. This moderate rep range is traditionally recommended because it balances weight and volume, heavy enough to impose tension, but enough reps to accumulate fatigue and metabolic stress. Rest periods. In strength training, rest intervals are long, often three to five minutes between sets to allow near complete recovery. You need that rest to perform the next set with maximal effort and crisp neural firing. In hypertrophy training, rest periods are shorter, commonly 60 to 90 seconds. The shorter rests keep metabolic stress high and increase the time under tension, enhancing the hypertrophic stimulus, but you wouldn't be able to lift as heavy on the next set. Training volume, sets. A strength-focused workout might call for slightly higher sets per exercise, for example, example, four to six sets of a given lift, since each set has few reps. A hypertrophy workout often involves about three to five sets per exercise, but also typically incorporates more exercises to target a muscle from multiple angles. The weekly volume, total sets per muscle per week, tends to be higher for hypertrophy training than for pure strength training because more volume helps maximize muscle growth stimulus. Exercise selection and execution. Both strength and hypertrophy programs rely heavily on big compound exercises, squats, deadlifts, presses, pulls, because these moves engage the most muscle mass and allow heavy loading. The difference is in execution and focus. A powerlifter training for strength might do triples, three reps on squat with maximum force and perfect form, stopping well before muscle failure to preserve nervous system output. A bodybuilder training for hypertrophy might do 10 to 12 controlled reps of squats, perhaps using a slightly lighter weight, focusing on the feeling in the quads and pushing closer to fatigue on each set. For hypertrophy, form is strict and tempo can be slower to increase time under tension. Whereas for strength, the priority is moving the weight explosively with good form to train the nervous system. Importantly, Progressive overload is a principle in both types of training. You must gradually increase the stress via weight, reps, or sets to keep making gains. But how you apply overload differs. The strength athlete chases higher weight on the bar, while the hypertrophy athlete might add sets or shorten rest to amplify the pump and fatigue. Both approaches require discipline and good technique to be effective and safe. Strength and hypertrophy are distinct adaptations but they are deeply interconnected. Simply put, a bigger muscle has greater potential to be a strong muscle, and a stronger muscle can be trained to become bigger. This means that even if you specialize in one area, you'll get some benefits in the other. For example, a novice who trains with low rep heavy sets will still gain some muscle size, and someone doing high rep bodybuilding workouts will still gain a lot of strength initially. However, the maximal development of each quality requires a specialized focus. Research illustrates this clearly in well-trained lifters. One study compared eight to 12 rep training, moderate load, with 25 to 35 rep training, light load, with both protocols taken to failure for equal effort. After eight weeks, both groups saw similar muscle hypertrophy gains. The high rep group's muscles grew just as much as the moderate rep groups. But when it came to strength, the heavy eight to 12 rep group far outperformed the light group. Their one rep max strength, like squat, one RM, improved about 20% versus roughly 9% in the high rep group. In other words, you can stimulate muscle growth with a variety of rep ranges, but building maximal strength requires lifting heavy weights. Another insight from strength science is that heavy training tends to produce greater neural adaptations, things like improved motor unit recruitment, whereas higher rep training produces more muscular endurance adaptation. It's also worth noting that the traditional hypertrophy rep range of six to 12 reps is effective but not exclusive for muscle growth. Evidence suggests that this moderate rep range might have a slight advantage of perhaps 10% higher efficiency for hypertrophy compared to very low or very high reps. This is likely because it lets you lift reasonably heavy weights while still doing enough reps to fully fatigue the fibers, a sweet spot for growth. However, you can absolutely grow muscle with lower reps, such as the five reps, or higher reps, what's so 20 reps, as long as you push those sets close to failure. 
Different rep ranges may even activate different growth pathways in the muscle, so varying your rep ranges over time can maximize overall development. The take home point is that strength and hypertrophy are not an either or proposition, they overlap. The strongest power lifters are often quite muscular and the biggest bodybuilders are incredibly strong in absolute terms. The difference is that power lifters prioritize neural training and lifting skill to maximize one rep strength, whereas bodybuilders prioritize muscle exhaustion and volume to maximize size. Many advanced programs will cycle phases of training, for example, a hypertrophy phase to build muscle mass, followed by a strength phase to train that new muscle to produce force. By understanding the distinction, you can periodize or emphasize what you need at a given time without neglecting the other aspect entirely.